Hey, it's Tom and Mike from Take Time to Travel. Cartagena is a vibrant travel destination with a spectacular historic center filled with colorful colonial architecture that's bursting with lush tropical greenery. But there are so many other great reasons to visit and amazing attractions to explore. So we decided to put together a Cartagena travel guide to show you some of the best things to do and the top places to eat during your trip to Cartagena, Colombia. We'll start in our favorite neighborhood called Hetsemani, where the streets are lined with brightly colored buildings as well as bushes and plants covered in blooms. There's also lots of charming narrow walkways like Calle de las Sombrillas and laneways filled with paintings and artwork like this picturesque street called Calle de San Juan. In Hetsemani, you'll also find lots of decorations hanging overhead, as you can see on Calle de las Banderas or Flag Street, as well as on Carrera 10, where you'll see many pennants and string lights lining this vibrant walking street. And just next to there is the often photographed Calle de la Magdalena or Cupcake Street, which has tons of colorful umbrellas suspended up above. But in our opinion, the most fun street here is Calle 28. In the evening, it's filled with restaurants, bars, and patios that have seating sprawling out into the narrow walkway. With lots of music and dancing, it has an incredible vibe. Another place with a great atmosphere is the nearby Plaza de la Trinidad. At night, it fills up with people, and sometimes there's even free events going on like this colorful dancing performance. And just a short walk away is Cafe Havana. It's one of the city's most popular bars and has a nice old school decor inside. But the main reason to come here is for the high energy Latin band that always gets the crowd dancing and having a good time. If you're looking for something more laid back, check out Parque Centenario. Here you'll find these cute little tamarind monkeys, along with some iguanas, some sloths hanging up in the trees, and a section lined with lots of stalls, selling books, and touristy souvenirs. For a local experience, head over to Bazerto Market. It's certainly not like any market that we've been to before, but it gave us a real taste for life in Colombia, with vendors selling an assortment of sausages and meats, as well as many stalls with fresh fish and seafood, lots of tables overflowing with cheap fruits and vegetables, and whatever else you might need. We had quite an interesting visit. Next, we'll head across the city to the Boca Grande neighborhood. It's a more upscale part of town, which is filled with restaurants and patios, as well as lots of places to do some shopping, and is where we stayed for our first month in this beautiful apartment that had a massive terrace with a spectacular view overlooking the beach and the Caribbean Sea. From there, it was like a one-minute walk over to Boca Grande Beach, which seems to just keep on going for kilometers and has a fantastic perspective of the towers running along its length. There's also Hollywood Beach right beside, which is also quite nice. And just around the corner is the less busy El Laguito Beach, where you can find a few waterfront restaurants and patios. If you're looking for a quiet spot away from the many vendors, there's Castillo Grande Beach, which has a long row of shaded seating areas, as well as umbrellas and lounge chairs to relax and enjoy the hot weather. It also has a lovely walking trail along its length, and over on the other side of the Castillo Grande neighborhood, there's an even better waterfront trail with lots of lush tropical vegetation that has excellent views overlooking the Bay of Cartagena's and the hotels and condo towers of Boca Grande. Also across on the other side of the bay, in the Manga neighborhood, there's another scenic walking path, which has some more fantastic perspectives of the city, especially in the evening, when you can see some gorgeous sunsets. Now we'll show you a couple of excursions you can do from Cartagena. We did this private Get Your Guide tour to Baru Village, where we had a tasty local breakfast and a delicious traditional lunch made for us. We also took a picturesque boat tour through the tropical mangroves, cruised through the breathtaking turquoise waters, did some snorkeling around the coral reef of Isla Grande, saw a school of colorful fish, 
and then went to one of Isla Grande's pristine public beaches, where we had a couple of nice cold beers and a super fresh lobster platter. It was an absolutely incredible Get Your Guide tour, and you can find a link for it in the description section down below. If it's a party you're looking for, they also have tours to Cholon Beach, where you can drink and hang out in the Caribbean Sea, surrounded by music and party boats. And for a more culturally enriching experience, there's the Castle San Felipe de Barajas, which was built in 1536 to defend the city of Cartagena against invading forces. Another historic fortification in Cartagena is the 11 kilometers of defensive walls surrounding the walled city. Construction began in 1614 through to 1796 to protect against continual pirate attack. The fortification's main gate into the walled city is also pretty cool, with a photogenic clock tower monument overhead. And if you make your way through the gate into Cartagena's historic center, you'll enter into one of the main squares called Plaza de los Coches, where there's often interesting events going on, like the Candelaria Festival which has lots of music and dancing. While in the walled city, you have to check out the Centro neighborhood. Here you'll find lots of shops and boutiques inside many of the beautiful and colorful old colonial buildings that are full of character and overflowing with vines and greenery. And at night, the streets fill up with people. The horse-drawn carriages come out and the lights come on, creating an enchanting atmosphere. If you're visiting the city during Christmas time, you'll also see some stunning light displays, like this one in Plaza de la Duana, and this huge Three Kings display, which is great for photos. Of course, there's also some charming squares in the historic center, like Plaza San Pedro Claver, with the 16th century San Pedro Claver Sanctuary, as well as Plaza de Santo Domingo, with the early 17th century Church of Santo Domingo, which has the Gertrudis Monument by Botero out front. One more main square in Centro is Plaza de Bolivar, which has a lovely green space in the center, and the historic Cathedral of Cartagena de Indias that was completed in 1612, just out front of which is a long row of artwork and paintings. Another lovely neighborhood in the walled city to explore is called San Diego. It's definitely quieter and more relaxed than Centro, but it also has colorful colonial architecture covered in tons of lush tropical vegetation and huge bushes full of blooms. Here you'll also find lots of amazing eateries and bars, like inside the Sofitel Santa Clara Hotel, which has this gorgeous green terrace called Restaurante Jardin Santa Clara, where we had a delicious meal, as well as the rooftop Botica Santa Clara Bar that has an idyllic view overlooking the pool. It's a fantastic spot for a drink. Another wonderful rooftop to check out is Mirador Gastro Bar, which has a bird's eye view of the Clock Tower Monument and has lots of tasty food options. Some other restaurants in the walled city that we'd recommend are Alma Restaurante, which has a pleasant upscale interior and serves delicious Colombian cuisine, as well as Restaurante San Valentin, where we had this massive seafood platter. In Hetsemani, we really enjoyed Restaurante Salele. It's one of the top-rated restaurants in Latin America and serves delectable Caribbean dishes that are almost too pretty to eat. Cartagena has lots of cheap and tasty street food options too, like this humongous Patacone Salchipapas that we got from Hamburguesas Gabriel, as well as Caramagnolas, Papas Reyenas, Deditos de Queso, and of course you have to try some arepas. For more food recommendations, check out our best restaurants in Cartagena video. And if you're looking to do an amazing experience, check out Get Your Guide. We put links to some of their top tours in the description section down below. Please like and subscribe, and remember, take time to travel. Catch you on the next one!